face and BAM chest. You snapped out stuff from China, Japan, and the Orient. No, if I didn't say the Orient, I said the Orient. She's a whore. Jesus, Jesus, slap that slut. You slap that slut. You suck my dick, bitch. You slap that slut from China, Japan, and the Orient. Ooh, you just fucked up, bitch. Kiss, kiss that goddamn bitch that the fuck to buy you, slut. I'm thinking to stick my dick up that bitch's butt. And twist. I'm thinking to stick my dick up that bitch's butt. And twist. Slap that stuff from goddamn China, Japan, and the Orient. Move stuck around, put your black ass and stall it easy to your white. You black ass bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. I don't put your black ass to cheating. Cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you're this, you're this fucking dumbass that can't play no goddamn chess. Come on, slut. <laughs> you suck my dick, bitch. Oh, no, no. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. Fucking bitch, you poor sport, bitch. I'm gonna put you guys fucking damn black ass for a poor sport, you slut. You suck my dick, bitch. Come on, dick sucker. Try right, even think about it, you slap that slut from China. You suck my dick, bitch. 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 Now be a dumbass and take that fucking pony. Snap that slut. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. With Uzi Emily. She's supposed to like with Uzi Emily. Suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. God fucking damn it. You suck my motherfucking dick, bitch. You suck my motherfucking dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. Oh, I should be you're fucking trying to do slut. 
You slut that slut. You suck my dick, bitch. God fucking damn it. Come on, you fucking dick sucker. Come on, you dick sucker. You suck my dick, bitch. 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 I see a dick in your future. I see a dick. 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 I see a dick in your future. I see a dick. You can kiss that damn night goodbye, you slut. You slut that slut. Suck my dick, bitch. You suck my motherfucking dick, bitch. You suck my dick, bitch. He tried to get his Uzi on me. You suck my dick, bitch. God fucking damn it. You suck, you suck my dick, bitch. God fucking damn it. God fucking damn it. God fucking damn it. God fuck it. Suck my dick, bitch. Holy ghost. Holy ghost. You suck my dick, bitch.
Bitch, bitch, suck right, my dick. We're live at Myth Vision Podcast, ladies you and suck gentlemen. My, you you suck question. my goddamn Be dick, sure bitch. to subscribe to Andrew White's YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about if the Bible is right, then Jesus is wrong. And of course, this is actually going to be a deconversion story combined with someone who studies suck my dick, heavily bitch. on Bible stuff. And suck fact, my dick, They bitch. have a lot of overlap with me and... I've been talking to them for quite some time, but I've never had them on the channel, and it's about dang time. But before we bring them on, you suck we my have dick, a bitch. little introduction from his channel to kind of ease you into subscribing while you're at it. So let's see what he has. Take a look at this video sequence of two pulpit preachers actually preaching the opposing views. That he, by the grace of God, should taste Dead for every man. Then limited atonement is the only thing that makes sense. Romans 5. He was two. Go. Two. He died for all. He died for all. He died for all. Well, that's not what scripture teaches. How can you call yourself a Bible-believing Christian and say, I believe the Bible is the word of God, and then look at this verse, Hebrews 2, 9, and say Jesus didn't die for everybody. But here he's talking about a specific group of people whom the Bible calls the predestined. I didn't make that up. John Calvin didn't make that up. Luther didn't make that up. Spurgeon didn't make God that damn up. John this Calvin. is Paul speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You're a liar is what you are. You're a false prophet is what you are. It is a particular redemption that pays for specific individuals like you and I. You don't believe this book. You believe in lies written by man. Wow, that is strong views heated up together. <laughs> All right, everybody, meet Andrew White from uh. the Myth Vision, Andrew. Thank you very much. I, and that was eight years ago, by the way. Uh. Well, thank you for that. That was fun. It, it always gets me a laugh. I mean, think about this, right? We're going to kind of take your deconversion story, go into your life a little bit about your history dealing with Christianity, your research and studying. But we're these are two very serious uh. Christians who are reading the same book or books and are like coming up with opposite interpretations and uh, it just goes to show you like how easily people can interpret things in various ways. Exactly. I mean, that, that channel was um, an outworking of me um, with one of the issues that really did affect my Christian life, which was just the diversity of Christian views. And so I did the program, by the way, um, in a way that you wouldn't necessarily know my, whether I was Christian or not because I think you could do it as a Christian equally. But what I simply did is a lot of the issues I went through myself, so including eschatology and science and evolution, Calvinism and Arminianism, I just went and found Christians who were speaking with the conviction of God like you just saw there. And you couldn't be more powerful. God they both fucking damn it. That they are, it's from the Holy Spirit, it's the Word of God, completely right. opposite views. And that's what the whole channel is about. It's just showing the opposite views. And you can go away and make of that what you will. But for me, it was very damaging. Uh, wow. So this is the YouTube channel. I'm not going to back out because then it'll already refresh. Uh, 688 yeah. subscribers. I hope, I, look, I would love to see us get to 900 or 1,000 if we could. Um, we've done it before. We've we've accomplished quite big feats here on Myth Vision. So subscribe to Andrew's channel. I've got a pinned at the top. So be sure to answer the uh, question God, and subscribe. He also has a podcast. Both the channel and the podcast are in the description as well for those who are watching this later. And of course, we have courses at MD Academics that you can go and take from the convenience of your home and all 4K, really high quality classes, and we're doing more as time goes by. God, the fucking Consider Holy joining Ghost. our Patreon. Holy if you Ghost. want to support us, be part of the family. Each month, there's yeah. always a certain amount of people who drop off, and I'm trying to keep growing it. It helps me keep doing what I'm doing here at Myth Vision. Okay, now for the plugs are out of the way. Andrew, who are you, and what... Is your past? We'll take questions along the way, but like, I want to get your story, and then we can get to uh, taking people's oh, questions. Uh, right? Yes, it's an interesting and long journey over over, over many years. I sort of hung on as a very very devout evangelical Christian for many many years, starting from when I was eleven, 
prior to that, I was a secular background, non-Christian family and everything else. It was my parents that had sudden born-again conversions in their 30s that then made us, as young kids, and I was 11 at the time, follow through into Bible camps and Christianity and all kinds of things um, related, like a sudden world change from nothing to everything Christian, church going, sitting there. And at a Bible camp, I became a Christian um, in the 70s. And so I took it very seriously. And um, I, I, it was a born again experience as far as I was told and believed. And so I was very serious. But I, I realized very early on, I thought through, even that young, particularly say 13 or 14, I thought through theology and things to do with the faith and the Bible way more than the people around me who just sort of had a sort of a Christian life that was devout, but it wasn't as academic at all compared with me I was very academic I was researching all the time so, so you and me we have a lot in common I'm going to ask the audience to join us and what I mean by that is wherever you are if you're watching this try and see if you relate in some ways to what you hear our guests speak on especially when it's deconversion type stories or their history and eventually exiting Christianity you may not have a lot in common but I try to latch onto the things that I do just like you um, I wanted to dive deep. I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to be accurate. And it was early on in Christianity when I heard different voices of Christians saying, no, speaking in tongues ceased in the first century. Why are you guys speaking in tongues? Or the, the list goes on on what true practices or beliefs are. And, yeah. and so, yeah, please continue. Well, well yeah, well, basically, what once <coughs> exactly what you just said just launches off perfectly because – uh, once I was in Bible camps and I was going through various things, uh, I was I realized that we were taught a certain form of theology, but I didn't realize at the time that oh, this was Christianity. But very soon, well, probably one of the first areas was actually the difference in eschatology, things to do with the end of the world. I realized then, oh, I have been taught that I'm a premillennial dispensationalist. You know, Israel was special. Um, the, there was a millennium. Jesus was coming back and was going to live in Jerusalem, and that I thought was true eschatology true end times and that was one thing and then we were in a church where only men i discovered i thought it was normal but only men could lead worship and preach and stuff like that and so um i then joined a movement at 18 called youth with a mission ywam so there'll be some people here on your channel probably you've heard of youth with a mission and ywam and have a few stories <clears throat> it was when i went there that i realized there was a massive different form of theology um the original sin had a different view than what I was taught. Um, women, I, when I went there, we were in a worship team and familiar, if, if people on your channel are not familiar with that, you know, it's, it's church service, people leading the worship songs with guitars and drums. It was sort of pop church, if you like, <clears throat> charismatic. I had come, I had moved into a charismatic, so I'd gone from a cessationist church when, when my parents became Christians we moved fairly quickly to charismatic so that was that was probably the first difference I thought oh so hang on so which one oh so we're right and they are wrong for not having the spirit right got that you know a millennials they're wrong women teachers that's wrong when I went to YWAM they challenged original sin uh, they had women worship leaders and women teachers in in, in uh, so it's like college really Bible it's like a form of Bible college uh, and that really threw me. And so suddenly my parents thought I'd got into some weird group because all the theology was different. And I was coming back saying different things. I was saying, well, original sin, you know, where you're just all condemned in Adam isn't the biblical view. And so and, and I was moving that way. And my you know, my parents weren't really happy with that. And that was just the beginning of a number of changes. And one of the biggest things in YWAM was something called open theism. Now, I'm not sure. I think you've. Derek have looked into that or had people yeah, I've on? Interviewed, yeah, I've interviewed a well-known one. And he's actually a wonderful person, by the yeah. way. But yeah. I think I've seen that episode. Yes, you have. So uh, Open Theism, it wasn't called th that then. That was a lot later term. Um, I think I forget what it was called at the time. But it was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, my mind was being blown by, I thought God, I wasn't a Calvinist, so God didn't determine everything. But he certainly knew everything like, like you see a film. And oh, suddenly, by, by the way, can I do something yeah. here that's interesting? Yeah. His name's Thomas J. Ord, for those who are interested. Oh, okay. But this goes right into our, like, what you're already painting. You're, you're setting up a picture here for the audience yeah. to see the diversity. And some of this diversity, you can see, starts to get on that, that, that borderline of,
of like, are you a Christian anymore? Do you believe that anymore? Because they're, the way a certain sect views the others and like fundamentals of what it is to be in the faith. Thomas wrote me, Derek, I hope this email finds you well. I've got a new philosophy of religion book coming out that rejects omnipotence and offers an alternative. <laughs> Am, Ami, not Amni, Ami or A-M-I potence, among other things. I argue that omnipotence dies a death of a thousand qualifications. I'd love to send you a printed copy if you're interested. Uh, anyway, so I was like, I'd love to interview you on that. But the point is, this is like, <sighs> please continue. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Every, everything almost I say could lead off to a, um, a rabbit trail of, of different thoughts, doesn't it? Um, and, and, and yeah, so that book, I have heard of Thomas, uh, that, that guy is an open theist. Um, and, but this was an early form because this was right back in the 80s and okay. it really threw me. But I also saw the, when I saw people argue it from the Bible verses, I thought, oh my gosh, I'd never seen that before. And this was, again, this happened in every area that when you have someone with another view, it's not that they're stupid. It's like their tradition has just built up their theology around a certain set of very, very face value reading texts that are just different from another set. And then, and then you get these splits and I realized, oh my gosh. So what actually is true? Do, do I take this set of texts, like let's say, like with God's knowledge, you know, um, you'd have people say, you know, um, God says, you know, to, to sacrifice Isaac and um, now I know. Now I know. It doesn't say now you'll know because I already know or I've ordained it. Now I know. And it's like, oh, gosh, that makes me yeah, the natural huh? reading is that God didn't know. Okay, so it can't mean that. Oh, so then we're back again. I know, no, I, nobody. Mean, even though we know I, what it says. I, I and I would say I can pick nobody. that. Nobody. Who was that? That, that, that's a... Uh, just don't lie. Just tell me. No, they, 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 they cannot hear me, so I can... They cannot hear me. Who are they that you're here listening to? I was I was talking, uh, cussing up the, them. Why? They used to be Christians. They're, they're not anymore. But and you use f words and things to, because they're so supposedly Christians. No, they can't hear it. I don't care. We hear it. Son, that's a, that's that's language that you do not need to do. You know that? Yeah. Then why do you do it? And, and besides, why are you angry at them? I just, I, I'm... Why are they not Christians? They used to be. They, they're not... So what are they saying? They, they're giving their experience. And, and what about? What point I, I used to be, be Christians. And then the, the, he used to be a Calvinist. That's not explaining to me why you got to go cursing and, and talk and trash about like that. But I just get angry. You have no right to do that. You know that? Yeah. No, it, it, it stop being angry. That's the Lord's, that, that the Lord, that's between them and the Lord. You can disagree, and if they ever talk to you or anything after, you can stretch up over to sit here cursing and you know, a constant f bombs one after the other. That's just that's, that's just not any good, Chris. It's just not good. It's not. It's not right. If you really cared, you would you would care for them, and you would, you know, because uh, if they got the, if they're not saved and they leave the earth, they're, they're doomed forever. Yeah. So you should care. You know, if if you got any problems with them, it would be to, to talk with them about it. Does that makes sense to you. Yeah, I tried to talk people. I yeah, can't. Yeah. Nobody. The, well, you. I don't care, son. A Christian. The, the, that's a Christian doesn't answer somebody back like that, talking like that, even if they're not listening or are not able to listen. Understand? Yes. Then tell me why you're going to continue doing it. You know why I make plans to stop it when I get angry at us? Why don't you give it to the Lord? Mm -hmm. 
Why don't you just say, did they tell him that if, if you're said that they're wrong? He knows they're wrong. He knows that, he knows that the, if their religion is it's useless, he knows it. And just, just, just sitting here and, and cussing at it, and, and Chris is just not, it's not good. It's not good. He just stop a second. You know, is he moving? Who are you playing? It's a, it's got Sam the Graham. It's got it's got what you call it. It's on a timer. And you, I mean, you're not talking to him. No, he can't hear the thing. Nor nor can I. I said, I, I implore you to stop it, and I implore you to go to the Lord with it. What's your problem? That's what I do. That's what they got. I want I want you to be in heaven when you leave this place. Yes, sir. I do, and, and he he will he will if you're true to and if you're in your heart and it's true, and you really really want to be saved. Are you, are you saved? Do you think you're saved? Yes. How do, how do you how can you do that? Curse like that? Huh? Hmm. Well, have you gone to him with this problem? Mm, not no, really. no. You haven't gone to him. It's probably because you've got the problem. He'd convict you of it. And you know he would. If you were to ask him and then talk with him and, and, and really in depth prayer and study and study his scripture, that you know that that's totally unacceptable. Would you do that in church? <laughs> would you do that with friends sitting around watching and listening to him and talking? No. Well, then why are you doing it? It released pressure. And there's no pressure on you, son, because they don't trust in God. There's no pressure on you. None. There's no pressure because they don't accept the Lord. If, you're, if your dissent would be th that, you could tell them that. Or, or you know, or, or, or listen. To, I wouldn't listen to people who have a, a wrong religion and not talk back. You know, if you're not talking back, mm -hmm. but you just you know, go you go ahead and play if you've got to play. Okay. But I want I want this family. I want you, me, mom, Jamie, and I. And I know Diana, and I know, and I'm sure your mom is going. I have to I have to battle them, my own demons. But I don't I don't go to I don't go to Lord and ask them and. Uh, and a curse like that, but there's better ways. If you don't do that, would you crumble? Uh, it would just ang build up the anger. Why well, build up? I'm asking you why the anger builds up because you disagree with them. There's the other areas in my life too. That, like what? The 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 pains and the the dissatisfaction of my looks. And, th and here's the big deal. God doesn't look at your looks. That's not what saves you. A pretty boy day is not saved necessarily. And some people, some who people would consider not pretty are going to be to have a wonderful heavenly home. Looks have nothing to do with it. And if you look for the praise of the outside, that's 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 what you get. That's what you get. You get nothing with your religion or your your your. That doesn't get you any closer or anything else. Just got to you got to get it under control, but and you, can, and you need to be you need to be praying constantly about getting that. I pray for it constantly that you'll come to understand that the Lord loves you. And don't tell me that God can't love you. God the Father can't love you. He's the one who sent his son. Is that not right? Yes. Okay, then how can you say God doesn't God the Father doesn't love you? How can you say that when he sent his son? All you gotta do is accept it. It's not it's not a religion it's like oh yeah, I know I read the Bible, I love it. It says it's not gonna work that way. 
I want you to, I want you, I want you happy. Be, this is temporary stuff, Chris. This life is temporary. But then what you do here, what you do down here, and if you, what you do down here is going to, uh, you're going to stand and, you know, all works will be judged. All works. Uh, works you've done for the Lord, you'll be rewarded for. If you're saved, you're not going to. If you truly have asked Jesus into your life and you mean it and sincerely have meant it, your, that your sins are forgiven. But that does not, like, like I said, that does not mean that you can go around raising Cain and doing everything because he's going to chastise you. And this, I, the biggest tra the biggest chastisement I've ever had is when God didn't answer me. Did what? When he si when he becomes silent, and, and then it just I can't I can't. I'm, I'm one of the, I'm one of the most unhappiest persons in the world. He, uh, this tear down to your son is very very temporary. And that's the times in which you take to let God guide you and give it all over to Him, and then live like live accordingly. You need to understand that, but this, you think God the Father doesn't love you, huh? No, I wonder sometimes. No, that's not what you. No, He loves for Jesus' sake. He loves you for your sake. Grace, he gave grace, he gives you grace, unmerited favor. And, and then his son, he sent his son to make it so you can be saved. So you can. <coughs> so I, I ask for your sake that you get, you spend more time with him in prayer. And, and not from daytime when you get up to watch TV and to do this all day, I mean all night, and then go out. And that's about your life. That's, that's, that's all you do. I know you got to do things and that, but uh, it's, I don't know. I, I didn't, my only answer to you is you can find comfort in, his, in him. He says one day you'll be beautiful. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're ugly. I don't, you know, I don't see it. Ugly is as ugly does, not as ugly looks. I've seen some of the most beautiful people that are the most hateful people and the most disgusting people that there is. And I've seen some of the so-called ain't good looking. But some of the kindest, most beautiful people in the world. They shine. They shine. So, you need to have some serious talk with the Lord, and sometimes you might even come on in and sit down and talk with me and uh, Jackie, and your mom and Dinah, and just talk. Uh -huh. huh? When you feel like you can't, you, if you get if you get depressed or something, talk. Tell us and come out and we will talk. That help you. That's what Christians are supposed to do: is help one another. And not only my son. One day you're going to be my brother in Christ, or you are already, but one day you'll see it fulfilled. And, and now that's the Bible, and I believe it and I stand on it. So, that's, the, that's, that's what I want to tell you about. They have bombs and all this, and you don't think Diane and your mother don't hear it. They hear it, son, and it hurts them. It hurts them. Plus, he'll let you go on if you want to keep going on and doing it. He'll let you, he's not going to. He may chastise you. I don't know. That if you're his, he's not going to put up with it. So, and by that I mean, you're miserable now, huh? Mm -hmm. he's, there's your punishment. There's your chastisement. You're miserable. You're miserable because you don't believe or trust him. You will, you will not trust him and let go. Like I said, I want you in heaven. I want you there. I 
want you there. I want us to be able to walk through. It's going to see my grand, your granddaddy, your grandmama, my, which is my mom and daddy, and see them for eternity. So you pick and choose which is what you what you want you want your pleasure and all all down here, or do you want are you, are you building up for heaven? Are you building up goodness? Uh, you can't you can't earn it, but by honoring God and His Son and believing and, and trying to, you're gonna slip. I slip. I slip, but to just wholesale, just uh, throw things out because you're so angry. He doesn't look at your face and, and everything else and, and decide, well, this ain't pretty enough to go to heaven. No. All he does is says, you believe on my son. <laughs> you believe on my son, and you believe in me. And one day you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be free of all this that you consider so important. It's gonna have been resolved. You're gonna be an absolutely gorgeous body. You're gonna be you're gonna be beautiful, but you're not gonna be troubled by being and will you you know that you know what it is. <coughs> so you decide. But I, I don't, even if you decide, whatever you decide, I don't want to keep hearing. I'll be walking down the hall and hear the f bombs consistently. Whore, slut, stuff like that. There's no, there's no place. To, so I'm trying to make it in this house. There's no place for such stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, just, just try, huh? Yes, sir. Now I love you. you I do. And your mother loves you. Diana loves you. And Jamie, in his own way, loves you. So, you're not alone. You're not alone in this world. So, just think on those things. Yes, sir. All right. Good night, honey. I love you. You do. teeth.
I just eared his rook. Man, I could, could have taken this. So. Concept that I just said and plonk it into every different area. Women in ministry, you know, I permit not a woman to teach or have authority over a man. Wow. Says it right there in 1 Timothy. And then someone else comes along and goes, ah, yes, but you see the word and the culture. And, and suddenly we're back again to, which is it then? Tell me. Um, and then um, and the same with every other view going, um, you know, the days of creation, you know, so it's like, you know, one and six days of creation. So six 24 hour days of creation. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what it means. And then, but there was no sun on the fourth till the fourth day. So how can we have a normal day? Oh, no, what does it mean? You know, and anything like that. And that's just, that's just a fraction of all the areas that I would have experienced and looked into. So. Oh man, there's so many good things you're saying that, that make a lot of sense. And and then you you notice in our conversation here, in our deconversion, we constantly bring up what the text, what the scripture, a Protestant perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, one might come from the high and mighty Orthodox Church or, or the Eastern Orthodox or the Roman That's Catholics right. and go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah shma, who cares? We have the ecumenical council. We have the church as our authority. And it's like, yeah, so that makes it much better that you trust these men who have been running this politically and, and throughout all these centuries. You trust these men saying that God is pretty much guiding and controlling them in a way um, so that the church is accurate, letting them be your authority rather than the literature, the text. And so no matter what path you take, you are going to run into a problem. You have to trust that somehow we have apostolic succession that go directly to Peter and there's some yeah. promise that the gates of hell will not prevail upon the church, which Peter is the head and you get the point. Like, no matter what path you take, you have a problem. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, just lagging there. Um, <laughs> just trying to follow it. Um, that's lagging? right. It, uh, well, yeah, I, your, your, your audio came back to me a little staggered there from when you when your image finished. But um, Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you're back now. Yeah. Press one in the chat if I'm lagging. I know you're lagging, at least yes. visually, not audio wise. But yeah, yeah, visually. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Press one if okay. I'm lagging bad yeah. in the chat, and then press two if I'm not. That's a great way to do it. <laughs> That'll let the audience tell us what they're seeing. One, I'm lagging. One, two, I'm not. And we'll see. So I mean, your audio, I'll have to go by your audio because the audio is absolutely fine. So I'm wondering if it's your connection that's causing me, because a lot of people are saying I'm not lagging. Oh, this okay. So it's my connection then, or it's my camera probably uh, mixed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so it's just me. So I. So just go ahead and you'll, you'll be fine. I can hear you absolutely uh, totally fine. 
Okay. Just like, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's your side. It's yeah. your side of things okay. people are saying. And, um, that's fine. Someone says you'll never debate an Orthodox. These guys will never debate an Orthodox Christian. Look, uh, I don't debate anyone, period, whether I think I, I got the one up or not. But at the end of the day, it's always about this debate. It's always about debate. Let's debate the text. Let's debate whether or not our yeah. church really goes back to Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bro, like, I'm we're not convinced, so. I mean, it's uh, one of the obvious yeah. things. I remember, because I, uh, part of my story a bit later down the line <clears throat> was when I went to Bible college, so I studied for a theology degree. And um, I remember uh, uh, outside once with some, some men, uh, people that I went through the course with. And sometimes it's the simplest childlike questions that are actually very powerful. And, I, and everyone's talking like this, debates, discussions, let's look at the text, let's see what the Bible says, and everyone's coming to different views. And yet, at the same time, in my form of Christianity, not only can you pray, but God can speak to you. You know, So a childlike question is like, oh, well, could God tell me then what's true? <laughs> you know, everyone's like trying to argue. So, so Lord, is the Calvinistic text true? Is, it, is, is that, should we be, yes, okay. Great, thank you. And then, of course, the next person to ask Jesus would be saying the Armenian is true. You know, so I, I just thought there's a big problem here. We spend our time trying to find out what God is saying, at the same time as saying that He could tell you, but what He does tell you is vastly different. Because I've, I've witnessed it. I've witnessed it. I feel the Lord is saying the Holy Spirit is on this woman to preach and become a minister. Hang around. I feel the Lord is saying that is of the devil, because Paul said, you know what I mean, in Timothy. Yeah. And so. So asking God, the, the simplest thing of asking God to tell you just doesn't work with reality. So then we're back again. Let's debate. <laughs> right. What the best it's just, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a debate in any area, just like you can have a political debate. Right. You know. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So that, that was part of my journey. I had to just throw that in. <laughs> yeah. No, please continue yeah. on your yeah. story. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so for, on the story, if I just go back a bit. Yeah. So when I went to YWAM, Youth of the Mission, that was, um, I, I, my brain was getting frazzled with open theism, with different view on original sin, women could now minister. Then I sort of came across um, people in the local church also that I was involved with. Not only were sort of Ar Armenian and charismatic, but there was other areas as well. And that was the scientific one. Um, so suddenly I get, you know, I was brought up a young earth creationist, you know, that the, the world was six to 10,000 years old, as they say, um, believe the word of God and these Darwin and the evolution is lie. So I was actually, actually in my teens taught that it was the lie so much so that if I watched a biological program and someone said over here, we have a very famous person called David Attenborough who does biology, uh, sort of like, um, uh, sort of programs about sort of not biology or what could, could, it could tie into evolution and all sorts of stuff and if someone like that said oh we're at this rock and this rock is like we, we've dated it to three billion years old and inner me now even still goes lies that's lies from the devil even now i have a gut reaction because of my childhood and wow. i don't know if anyone on your channel might witness to that but um but back back then when when it was challenged and i and my pastor in that church <clears throat> was an evolutionist theistic evolutionist wow they weren't even christians from my teenage right. background this is now into my 20s and suddenly i thought ah oh, and then i read some books and suddenly i thought oh my gosh young earth creation is not faring well certainly not with science and it's not faring well with all the bible text either in in other parts and so i i became an old earth creationist and then before that Anyway, then I became a theistic evolutionist. So I, I was literally at sea <laughs> as, a, as a Christian who had trying to find the truth. I found myself at sea all the time, changing to different views. So actually, if you, if you looked at my life story, you'd say, what does Andrew believe? Well, it depends what five year period we're talking about here. Right. Uh, he, he believes that God you know, ordains everything here, just knows everything here. He doesn't know the future here. Women can preach here. He believes he's theistic evolutionist. Oh my gosh. It was just so much to handle. And I thought, what world are we living in when people are talking about the Bible is true and you must believe this? I mean, okay. So what about trying to embrace it all like a more liberal progressive, you know, let's just say, yeah, there's a place for young earth creationism. There's a place for theistic evolution, Armenians, Calvinists. Let's all just have a holy huddle. But that doesn't work either because they break into camps condemning each other. They don't, they don't just, you know, they say, well, 
you're totally wrong. And then you get the Ken Hams, the young earth gracious, say the whole foundation of Christianity falls if there's no Adam and Eve and no literal creation. Right. And then you think, okay, so those that, like Peter Enns and other people that I know now who, who don't accept that, they, they're not Christians then, or the foundation crashes. And so basically with these ideas, I started to really, and, um, and that's before I went to Bible college, I was starting to doubt, I think, what, not the faith, just, I, I just realized I was being told a load of nonsense, but I didn't know quite what the non-nonsense meant. <laughs> what, because you what am I going to... find out for yourself, though. I, you, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. And um, people um, said to me, yeah, I, 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 that's where I was different from a lot of peers that I went through college with who were still in the faith, who, who knew all the stuff that I found out. But for me, I had a strong thing. I want to know the truth. I think I'd been battered around left, right and centre with all these different ideas. And it's more subjects as well. It's not just that. It's like, oh, no, not another one that that's, um, people disagree on, not another area, you know. And that's, that's just it within evangelicalism. So if you go to Catholic, like you said, you've got extra seven books. You've got, an, uh, I think it's um, one of the Orthodox that has even more books than the Catholics do. And I thought, okay, so the Bible is what? I thought it was 66 books inspired by God. But, but these other books that seem to have good attestation in history that were in church history, considered scripture before the Reformation. And I thought, oh, no. Um, should I be a Catholic then, you know? And then I thought, well, how can that be the way? Is that the word of God or not the word of God? And then, then I found textual criticism. Suddenly you realize that John, the woman caught in adultery, wasn't in the Bible. The ending of Mark wasn't, it was tacked on later. And people were pushing things around. And, and you think, oh my gosh, it's not quite as pristine as I thought. And so I had to account for that. And you do, you don't lose your faith over these things. I didn't, but it's just that I became more liberal, more progressive. And um, therefore, more attacked by other people who think you're going off the track just because you're saying, look, I, I have to accept that the best understanding is the end of Mark is not in the Bible. It even says it, it, it you know, in, in most of the manuscripts. And it's like, well, no, we think it's the word of God. Um, and so uh, you then find yourself finding yourself happy in different groups because other groups are a bit too fundamentalist for you as you do your own journey. And then this path kept going for me, you know. And then I went to Bible college and then, whoa, then it all started to unravel because I went because I wanted to peel off what I called pseudo-Christianity. I don't know if that's a good term to use, but you know what I mean by that, you know. Uh, um, define it for us, just to be right. sure. Well, they called it, they called it even at, at college when I went to Bible college, they called it folk Christianity, i.e. Um, there's a sort of um, things that build up in people that are just in the pews rather than in studying the Bible or at theology college. Folk theology would just have things that aren't really part of even older Christian traditions or even part of the Bible, but they just become normative. Um, I mean, even views like dying and going to heaven, for example, is a very popular Christian view, but actually it's not really kind of a biblical one in the narrative of the Old Testament by any means. And even in the new, mm -hmm. it, there's not quite this die and go to heaven. That, that it's really sort of the imminent end and Jesus coming back in a kingdom and not a lot about this sort of what happens when you die. And, and yet, so folk theology would be, you just die and go to heaven, you know, if you're a Christian and and, and so it's sort of getting rid of those sort of mythological Christianities. I wanted to get to the truth. And what happened was that I felt it was like an onion. And I was peeling away a layer. I thought, we're going to get there soon. So I got rid of that. Oh, yeah, got rid of that. This is more biblical. Got rid of that. And then finally, what happens when you peel an onion? Um, you, there's nothing in the end. You just peel and the last layer. Ah, oh, yeah. And you cut that very good analogy. I love it. You cry all the way, which is probably what I was doing inwardly. It wasn't an easy journey. So, um, and so at Bible College, when I, when I started to engage in writing um, <coughs> papers for various subjects, I had to engage with more critical books, sometimes non-Christian scholars, sometimes Christian scholars, but just more progressive and honest Christian scholars. And they made so much sense. I thought, oh my gosh, I've always struggled with that passage. That makes so much sense. But now that means that um, the passage has had redactors and it's been changed and it's been evolving. And it's like, oh... Oh, so the Bible isn't quite what I wanted it to be. And I'd have to say that She's when people say that you want to leave the faith because you want to for some sort of moral reason, right. for me, that wasn't it. Like I said, um, 
because that's often said, isn't it? For me, I went down fighting. I, I had a shock of my life when I finally thought, oh, no, I don't think any of it's true. But that came a bit further down the line. Okay. I, I, yeah, you'll get there. And, and then I, I through all, all these views at college... And I, it,
I watched this video of my performance last night at karaoke. Now that I saw how I looked, my head's bent to the side like this, like a retard. I'm big, I'm pudgy, I'm not thin, I'm unsexy. Every, every, with, every, with each frame of me in this video right here. Which each, with each frame, the curses, the, the curses towards God are welling up within me. I cannot stop them. I don't want to curse the Holy Ghost, but if I look at this, I curse the Holy Ghost. Now, why am I cursing the Holy Ghost? When it says, Whosoever speaketh the word against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Because I'm hoping I curse the Holy Ghost if I look like this. If I do not get sexy and thin, I curse the Holy Ghost. I cur look at my hair. I look so butt plain and average. I curse the Holy Ghost if I look like this. And why am I cursing the Holy Ghost? Hoping that God will let me at least look good. So that I won't mean it when I say I curse the Holy Ghost. Thereby I won't have to curse the Holy Ghost. Speak against the Holy Ghost. But I hate, some, I hate myself so much. Looking like this. I'm willing to risk it. I curse the Holy Ghost if I look like this. Holy Ghost, I curse you if I look like this. If I do not look good. I curse the I curse Holy Ghost if I look like this. I do now. Thin and hair, unsexy. I curse you, Holy Ghost. I curse you. I curse you, my Lord, Holy Ghost. I curse you. I curse God. I look big and I curse the Holy Ghost if I don't want to not get in stage 6 and 10. I curse the Holy Ghost. Look at me. So unsexy. I curse the Holy Ghost if I look like this. Don't tell me there's nothing wrong with these looks. It's my retarded brother. So what if there's nothing wrong with my looks? There's nothing right with my looks either. I curse the Holy Ghost if I'm not sexy and thin. I risk it all. Holy Ghost, I curse you if I don't, do not get sexy and thin. I swear with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I do. I curse you, Holy Ghost, if I look like this right here. I curse you. I curse you that I had, if I don't get my vision back. <coughs> <laughs> I busted him up.
sure control is not convinced, but the computer has the evidence. No need to abort the countdown start. Watching in a trance, the crew is certain, nothing left to chance. All is working, trying to relax. Up in the capsule, sent me a 